Hey guys, not sure if ASMR here. A little bit of a soft-spoken vibe today, a little bit of a different kind of video. As you can tell, we are unboxing some sneakers. Very excited for this one. I have the microphone over here. It's the um, little like pop filter thing is off of it, um, which I normally don't do because Previously, I was recording in a room with a lot of noise from like a fan, and you would have like wind noise on it. So, trying this out. If it's crispier, um, I wouldn't know because I'm not wearing my headphones. Um, but, anyways, I am very excited for this today. I, I got this pair of shoes in probably about. Um, ish ago, <laughs> and I've been meaning to record a video uh, unboxing them because I was like, I don't want to just unbox these, wear them, and then put them back in this thing and then make a video. I want to like make it so that I have to make a video to try these on. Soft speaking, uh, there's obviously gonna be some sneaker sounds, sneaker shoe fabric sounds. And I'll be recording today as long as uh, either, probably as long as my camera can allow it. Unless I get bored. Last time I recorded in the uh, in the ASMR closet, um, the Google Stadia unboxing, um, I was more centered over in this region, and I noticed that there was a lot of uh, shadowing from the light that's directly above. So far, things are looking pretty good on camera. Of course, this doesn't matter too, too much if you're not watching this. Um, if you're just listening to the audio. Or it's in the background. But. That's a, that's a really nice thing sound, I think. As somebody mentioned in the previous video, they like my rhythmic tapping. Um, with the shoes, I'll do something. I definitely would love to make a whole video kind of dedicated to that. I have a few ideas with some stuff that's around my house. Alright, so let's talk about these shoes, right? Now, Last time we did a shoe unboxing, uh, it was for those uh, Easy Boost 700s. I did a long, long, long time ago video that a lot of people have watched. It was the Easy uh, Boost 350 uh, unboxing, which I 
have here. They are not. Oh, they're in nowhere near the condition that they were when I first got that got the parachutes, but I love them all the same. Today is a little bit different. We've got um, it's a pair of boosts, a newer pair. They, the old ones, uh, older ones didn't have this box design. Uh, I would grab one from the corner, but they're basically like a yellow striped kind of design. This is a little bit different. It's got three stripes here, three stripes up above. And then three stripes again on the side. And Adidas Originals logo is on the side. And if you can, you can probably notice that this box does have kind of a little bit of damage on it. It's a um, it's a used bear that I got off of Goat. Um, is it a used bear? Maybe like a damaged box pair. Um, the reason I got it was. I saw a Reddit post of the shoe, and I was like, oh, these look pretty good. Um, I'm not I'm not a fan of any of the other silhouettes, or any of the other um, colorways that the shoe has come out in. I think they're a little bit too tacky, too, um, a little bit too, uh, uh, not really my type. Um, as you know, as you might have seen from, like, the sneaker, uh, cleaning video. Oh, I think that was just a thumbnail. Um, actually, there's a video from a while ago that's something like, um, just like sneaker ASMR, and I kind of show off my pairs. Um, but most of my pairs kind of look like this, where they're pretty minimal, pretty much uh, black and white kind of thing. I like it to keep it clean and simple. Um, I do have... Ooh, I have another pair, the Kithnon Natives. Uh, these are a little bit busier, obviously, but uh, I still like... They're still, like, minimal enough for me. They're still, like, kind of stealthy. Ooh. These are a little bit less like that, but I think they'll fit in with my uh, kind of summer-spring vibes. Uh, Summer spring apparel, if you will. Let's open it up. And do be warned, there might be some loud crinkle sounds coming up. Are, um, these are the uh, 
jazz shoes, if you will. Uh, uh, more common name, I guess, would be like the Dixie Cup kind of vibe. Um, these are the Adidas Tresk Run in white, purple, aqua. Um, they have a full length boost midsole with a plastic kind of uh, maybe a TPU type, uh, almost kind of a flame pattern here with an additional motif that extends through the suede that's over here. Um, and I apologize. If I don't know the exact names of the materials. Um, I'm not Seth Fowler or Hess Kicks. Uh, I'm just a guy making YouTube ASMR. <laughs> but uh, we have some suede panels here in Aqua. There's some more kind of uh, less uh, oh, what's the word? Less pronounced kind of uh, suede or new buck in this off-white color going here and kind of on top of these stripes which are reflective. I did not know that before I purchased these. Um, when I unboxed them for the first time and just to look at them, I noticed that they were reflective. Actually, well, let me see if I can give you a bit of a look here. They're reflecting in the light, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so with that, we have kind of this uh, mesh. Uh, looking material up top. Uh, definitely not priming it, more of a mesh-like uh, material. Um, we have maybe like a, like a, it's looking like a fake leather, um, kind of on top of the off-white um, suede. Typical white laces, nothing too major. Um, I was considering swapping these for a light purple to kind of match the sides, but again, I haven't, this is my first time really holding the shoes. Um, haven't even worn them yet. And then on the back, kind of this purple dot, little oval thing, and a bit of a mesh-like material here. Um, this is, for, for the boost heads, this is Maybe you can see it on camera. It's uh, fish scale boost versus the regular boost. Uh, let me see if I can kind of illustrate. Maybe there you can see that it has more of a fish scale pattern versus something like that. Versus an ultra boost, which has a more um, more randomized pattern. I don't know if there's a significant difference in the comfort. I don't know why one there's one pattern uh, versus another. I'm guessing that they use the fifth scale version for their more lifestyle shoes. Um, I saw it on a previous pair, the like uh, the Anikis or the uh, I five nine two threes, whatever they're called. Uh, I had a pair of those for like a day and they had the fish scale boost. Um, but yeah, not really sure what's the difference there. Um, I've worn, like I said, I, I had those pair of Vinikis, I've worn them uh, again like once. I couldn't tell the difference in the quality of the boost. I couldn't like, tell the difference in the quality of the upper. Um, but yeah, upper we talked about, we talked about the midsole. The, outsole I really like. It has these, a uh, bit of a runner aesthetic, has the same aqua and purple um, uh, color details from the rest of the shoe, which I kind of like. It really reminds me of something that's very 90s. I, I love it. Um, as a child of the 90s, you know, this is extremely my shit. 
um, you have the Adidas logo right here, and you have, uh, kind of like, circle, I don't know if you can see these little dots that they have, um, they're kind of, uh, they have these little tips on them that kind of remind me of a brand new car tire, um, that's kind of like those little whiskers. So yes, the Tresk run. There's the sticker for the, the tag. The Tresk run. I went with my uh, true size on these, so we'll see how that uh, fits. And yes, they still have uh, they still have the little crinkly paper on the inside. Um, the tongue is something I'm not used to really because it's an attached tongue. I haven't worn shoes with attached tongues in a while. Um, and then manufacturer date of March 2019. If you're watching this, you would know what the date is. It's March, uh, February. It's February 2021 right now. Um, maybe when I upload this, it'll be March. 2021. I don't know. Um, on the inside, we see the Adidas logo um, and word mark, and it says the brand with the three stripes in three different languages. That's the left shoe. We'll put this out here. The right shoe is again. The same, I haven't unboxed this one previously, so the uh, shoelaces are on the inside. Kind of gives you a look at the shoe though. That's the medial side. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Like the inner side of the shoe? And the right side, or the outer side, uh, the lateral side. Don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> and Again, the kind of TPU um, add-on to the boost. That's interesting. The outsole kind of thins up in this point and isn't as um, thick at the spot. It's still there, but it's not really like going. It's not really spilling over the edge. Um, my camera is showing an overheat warning. I don't like that. <laughs> um, if the video cuts off, we'll just do uh, sounds. After, afterwards, we'll just go straight from the mic because you won't really need to see much of the show. Um, that's that. Last thing's in the box. There's the uh, Goat Verified Punch Out card. Maybe we'll do some tactics after this. Looks like, uh... If you guys watch Massage ASMR like ever, this gives me the bit of a white balance card sounds. I'm not surprised. details on here, I've just noticed there's this uh, silverish stripe here, kind of a light gray, um, kind of a plasticky material, but it's definitely reflective. Um, what else? Can I notice it from, from the side over here? At least I can. I don't know if it's visible, but the tongue also has that same silvery reflective plastic going there. I go on over here. So, what 
20 minutes in, let's go ahead and go, let's stop, it's 20 minutes on the camera, not the video, probably. Either way, let's exit out. Too high, allowing to cool. That's what my camera does. To cast off the microphone. And since I don't really have a plan for this, what I'll probably do is I'll um, maybe I'll turn the camera back on at the end. For like an on feed thing. see on video because the camera's off now is that on the front of the shoe the uh, outsole curls up and goes onto the uh, suede upper at the forefront of the shoe and keeping in line with typical adidas quality control there's there's, there's, um, like, glue marks. You can see kind of the glue of the upper and the, uh, like, the pencil. It kind of looks like it leaked and cooled. And there's this kind of, like, these little spots of look like wet spots on the suede. Speaking of wet spots on suede, I am a little concerned about wearing these outside in the real world. I'm not the most careful sneaker wearer. I just gotta wear my shoes and enjoy them. Um, I've had liquid proof. I've got a bottle of that first extremely long time and haven't really used it and I want to see maybe if that'll work on helping prevent uh, deterioration from happening too quickly on this pair of shoes.
closet doesn't get any kind of uh, ventilation. So even if I had the air on, uh, my camera would have still had the overheat warning. If you watch my older videos, um, in one of them I explained that I use a pretty old camera for the videos. I have a newer camera. Um, I use this like my primary photography camera, uh, but now I can record in 4K and like get some decent video out of it. That one can last a little bit longer, but for overheating. But I don't use that one because this camera has a flip-up screen, which is important in figuring out how I look in frame. Now I could connect my camera to my phone, but the issue there then becomes I'm wasting battery on two devices at once, while also getting like this really laggy uh, feed the phone, so I don't really use it. It's kind of like I have to go through some extra steps just to get video. And I can just use this camera that's older. And I like the footage that comes out of it. And hopefully you do too. In order to do that, I'm going to have to remove the crinkly paper. And this would get loud. Paper number two. going a little bit slower, just so that there's no abrupt 
harsh sounds. But the other part of it is struggling. Because my hands are getting full. these on just yet because it's gonna be a lot of sounds kind of all of that. Instead we're gonna set these all to the side. They look amazing just by themselves. They look so cool. Um, let me know if you're still watching and you're not asleep. Let me know. Are you a fan of these shoes? Do you like completely different shoes? Do you have a pair of Tresk runs in a different colorway? I want to know. Let me know what you're into, and let's have a conversation. I need to find the pit of a card. Pit of a card. <laughs> the goat verified card. First, I'm going to take you through a rundown of the of what it says on here, since there's no camera feed, and because. This is, ended up being much of a soft-spoken, kind of whispered video. At the top, code verified. On the side, there are two main points of, um, two main sections. We're looking at authenticate, excuse me, authentic, authent, ugh. <laughs> yikes, authentication and quality control. Inside those categories, we have color and shape, material and structure, stitching, sole, label and tag. And under quality control, we have skew and size, right and left, shoe condition, box condition, and accessories. For each one of those uh, little points, there's a punch out card. There's a punch out uh, hole in each one of those, for each of those categories. I'm sorry that this is difficult for me to say. Um, basically, each punch out represents that uh, each detail item uh, was correct, I guess. So, for example, for authentication, um, is the stitching correct on the shoe? If the, sometimes it, for like knockoff shoes, you'll have stitching that's a little off. It's not in the right spots. It's uh, poorly replicated. And what a company like Goat or StockX or eBay, what they'll try to do is that they'll look at the stitching of the shoe and compare it with, um, my guess is that they're comparing it with press shots, press photos um, of the shoe, perhaps um, maybe reference photos that the company themselves have taken so that they can compare the materials of the shoe with that of the reference photo. If any of these things is incorrect, for example in this case the stitching, the shoe would be returned its original owner, and the sale would be canceled. So I 
originally bought a pair of these. Um, in like November, I think. Because um, when I saw that Reddit post, I immediately went to go and I was like, hey, like, what's the price of this shoe? Or I think, no. Someone, the Reddit post was like, I got these shoes for like 50 bucks at a TJ Maxx or something. You know, like, and I was like, what? Never even heard of these shoes. I've seen this shoe before. It hasn't been a shoe that I found particularly attractive. And then I see, you know, 50 bucks in this colorway. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Why not go? Models, maybe like summer, um, maybe like August. And I was like, oh, I'm like, I don't know. Pandemic is still happening. Like, I don't want to spend money on shoes, even if it's only 50 bucks. Either way, November rolls around. I decide, no, let's pull the trigger. Um, bought the shoes. And then what happened was the whole reason for this tangent. The uh, sale was refunded because the shoes never shipped, or perhaps the seller took too long to ship, and so I do not get the shoes then. Um, at a separate instance, uh, where a pair of shoes was sent over, and failed authentication and they'll ship back to the seller. I was like, come on, like it's just annoying. Don't if you're if you're in this the sale of shoes, if you're in the resale market and you're selling knockoffs, please don't sell them through uh marketplaces that require authentication of your shoe for one year line. And for two years inconveniencing the buyer. Because one of the shoes that I had bought was a purchase for a friend of mine. business on a third-party selling site, you gotta play by the rules. It just, it's just easier to, easier to cooperate and do things correctly than to inconvenience your buyer. Anyways. for authentication, for quality control. I just want to make sure that the size of the shoe is correct to the one that you purchased. So, I'm an 11 and a half. If I got an 11, I probably wouldn't be very happy. Maybe I would. I, I'm not, I try not to be very confrontational when it comes to Try not to be a Karen, if you will, if something doesn't go my way. I'm generally pretty forgiving when it comes to erroneous things. But something that I would get a little upset by is if I got two right shoes or two left shoes. <laughs> and they check for that. I mean, check shoe condition and box condition, and as you saw at the beginning of the video, 
if this box was damaged. But because the box was damaged, I was like, if I get a little bit of a discount. Um, I think the shoes ended up being $55, which is a little more than my original. Um, I think they, the first ones that I bought were $40. But I obviously never bought those. And yeah, $55 for a pair of Boost shoes that look like that. It's a steal. Especially considering, you know, when the world will like easy is worth like $200 for a shoe. That, that's a lie, it's like $300. And I kind of want to spend that money, you know? I don't know if you guys are at all interested in the the GPU market. A similar thing is happening there. Demand is super high, supply is super low, and prices have gone way up. Because everyone wants them. So something that should cost $400 now costs like $900. And that's a little bit of a steep price for me. videos are definitely easier to make. Because at first, it's kind of weird. It's like, oh, I'm just kind of talking to myself in a closet. <laughs> very often, but when I do, I tend to become lost in the phone call, like I'm talking about the person in front of me, and so I'll end up in kind of weird places and weird spots and sitting down in interesting areas and doing all sorts of weird things just because I'm so invested in the phone call. Apologies for the 
stomach sounds. will be sooner rather than, rather than later. Alright, have a good sleep, and hope you have a wonderful week.